The Sacramento Police Department continues to mourn the loss of one of their own as they now try to figure out why. Take a look. Sacramento officer Tara O'Sullivan died last night at UC Davis Medical Center. She was just 26 years old. She was shot responding to a domestic disturbance call in North Sacramento. The shooting led to an hours long standoff between police and the suspect. With the help of nearby agencies shut down a wide area around the home where it happened, police and the suspect exchanged gunfire multiple times, but he did surrender around two this morning. He's now in the Sacramento County Jail facing a murder charge. That was the somber procession around midnight that took fallen Officer O'Sullivan from the hospital. A little more on Officer O'Sullivan. She was 26 years old when she died, as I said. She joined the Sacramento Police Academy in July 2019 after working for the Sacramento Police Department's administrative staff for months. She graduated from the academy back in December and was one of seven women in her graduating class. She was hired by the Sacramento Police Department as an officer in January. She had only been on the force for six months. Tara O'Sullivan will now forever be linked to Sacramento State University. That's because she went to school there, not just for a degree, but for its newly developed law enforcement program. ABC 10's Kurt Rivera has that part of our coverage. This is Tara O'Sullivan promoting what she loved. While completing your degree, the LEX program helps candidates apply for the position of officer. She appeared in the Sacramento State University Law Enforcement Candidate Scholar Program promotional video. Phase two is an internship with inside your prospective agency. For which she was in the first class to graduate in the fall of 2017. We lost a hero. We lost a leader. We lost somebody who we love. Today, those who knew the young officer with a bachelor's of arts degree in child development tried to hold back the tears at a very emotional news conference on the Sacramento State University campus. This morning when I was trying to explain to my daughters why I was so upset about my student, the only thing I could think of to explain to them was that she was a hero. They understand heroes and that's exactly what she was. She's a role model to so many people. And I asked her, why are you considering joining the police force when you're studying child development? That doesn't make sense. And she said, I'm learning all of the skills I need to be an officer. Shelby Moffat developed the school's two-year law enforcement candidate scholars program. She was uh, one of the first bright lights uh, that was involved in the program because she was a go-getter. Uh, slight build. She wasn't what you'd see the stereotypical, uh, you know, big, tall, strong person, but she had tenacity. Fellow scholars who went to school here with Tara say they always looked up to her. I just always looked up to her for guidance and she's definitely a role model and will always be a hero in my heart. She really started the program and how it will be and how it will continue to be run. She set the example and that's what she did with everything. We appreciate everything she did and she would want me to do what I'm going to do. Stingers up. It's just such a heartbreaking story. President Nelson says money will be raised to create a scholarship in Tara O'Sullivan's name. A chair will also be named after her at the school's new planetarium. This has been a lot of information to take in at once, we know, so we want to take a moment to give you a brief timeline of everything that happened last night. It all started around 1145 when police got a call about a domestic disturbance between a man and woman. At 3.30, officers met the same woman at a home in Arden. Just before 6 p.m., Officer O'Sullivan and other officers went with the woman to the home on Redwood Avenue to gather some things. Shots were fired at 6.10. That is when Officer O'Sullivan was hit.
It was not until 654 that officers would be able to get an armored vehicle into the backyard to evacuate O'Sullivan. She was then rescued within five minutes. At midnight, the procession from the hospital started and Officer O'Sullivan's death was confirmed 45 minutes later. The suspect surrendered just over an hour after that. Officer O'Sullivan's end of watch call came just before 4 a.m. this morning. You know, we got a lot of questions from you about how Sacramento police handled the standoff, including why it took 44 minutes to get to Officer O'Sullivan after she was shot. ABC 10's Lilia Luciano spoke with a man who spent five years on a SWAT team about what goes into a rescue like this. What did you pick up from that rescue? How did it take place? Um, from the radio traffic, you know, within just uh, three or four minutes, uh, a police team uh, probably quickly assembled on site, says we've got a, a shield team ready to go. And a shield team is basically officers who can go in a stack mm -hmm. behind a barricade that they are moving, maybe laying down fire, cover fire against the subject and pull the officer out of there. And, you know, within minutes after making that announcement that we're ready to go, uh, somebody made a command decision, no, that's too dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, which is a reasonable call here. Uh, and said, let's wait for the Bearcat, Bearcat's on the way. You know, they needed an armored vehicle because of those circumstances. One of the big questions that people have is, you know, why 44 minutes to be able to rescue Officer O'Sullivan? You know, here we have a shooter that uh, had a high-powered rifle working in a close area, a backyard, a front yard, laying down all kinds of rounds, all kinds of shots fired uh, in a two-story building. So he could shoot from an elevated position, uh, and so all of that created a heightened risk. This went on until like 2 a.m. It's such a long time and it's one person. Uh, why is that? What do you think they were attempting, protecting, preventing? The um, kind of the long, long ago SWAT method was to bust down the door and everybody go running in with guns right. blazing. Uh, that changed uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago to more of a slow, methodical approach, you know, that's safer. Uh, so there's nobody else is going to get hurt because they've evacuated the neighbors uh, from their homes. They have the area cordoned off. There's nobody else inside the house, so there's no rush. You know, let's talk some sense into him. Let's not get other officers hurt. And we should tell you, our team is working to make sure you're updated on all the information we're learning about this shooting. For those updates and a full breakdown of the deadly shooting of Officer O'Sullivan, text the word OFFICER to 916-321-3310 and we'll send you a link to a timeline of updates. Meanwhile, this is the suspected gunman. This is the only time we plan to show you his picture during this show. He's 45 years old, Adele Sombrano Ramos. He's in the Sacramento County Jail facing a murder charge tonight. He's due in court on Monday. He has an extensive criminal history, including DUI, drug charges, and domestic violence. We wanted to give you some perspective as well tonight on what it's like in that old North Sacramento neighborhood. Some have suggested it's a dangerous area, but residents say it's actually a nice place to live. We moved in here because of the neighborhood. Uh, it's peaceful. Um, we've got a bike trail that goes right into Midtown, close to everything. And it was weird to look outside and see the bike trail that we're normally on. And then cops with shields running across lawns over there. And then within 30, 40 minutes, there were cops in heavy armor and uh, ARs. Kind of scared us a little bit because this neighborhood is relatively quiet. Keep in mind, last night's standoff forced many people to take cover in their homes. Multiple shots were fired. ABC 10 even met another neighbor who was caught in the middle of all that shooting. We're in Naralto, North Sacramento, off of El Camino. Um, I'm just sitting in my house and I hear something like fireworks, like pop, 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 pop. This is a bullet hole that went through the house, back of the house to the wall. And then a bullet hole through our closet door. There we go. But I called 911 told them I was scared to death, you know, that there was somebody on my roof with a gun. Right there, you could see him. I have a half picture of him. He was just laying down and then he'd get up and two or three times he got up with his gun and 
was ready to shoot, and one time he did shoot. Where's our point of cover? Where's our, where are the shots coming from? Which side? I don't know what happened, and then all of a sudden, a SWAT team come knocking on the door and said, or whatever, I don't know who, we got evacuated. And I was more than happy to go. But I called 911 and told them I was scared to death. You can only imagine we have done extensive reporting on this story since it broke around 6 p.m. last night. To see everything, including the latest updates, head to abc10.com.